So hey everybody, this tutorial is a bit different. I'm gonna go over how you can get different escape velocities with math and generally logic. So what we have done last time is we got this character here to perform a wall jump. And I'm gonna go over how everything works in a second. But let me really quickly demonstrate that everything works. So what is happening is we jump here and we get the escape velocity. So the escape velocity in our example, let me open up paint.net. Um, so the lower, uh, the flatter we go at it, the lower the escape velocity is. And yeah, and let me just wait till paint.net is up. There we go. And what we have here is, well, let me move that here, move that here. So what we get is we have a wall, we have a wall right here. And let me actually stop simulate. So what we get is, first of all, we are getting a line trace, which we do on action jump. So if we're close to wall and do that, and we're falling, so we're in air, then we get the word location of this arrow, this arrow rotates with the character. So if we like looking another way, it looks also the same direction. And then we get a forward vector, which is a one base value. So let's say we're coming from here and we do our line trace roughly here. And what we get is we hit the wall here and then we break this uh, line trace by channel. So after this, we get the normal. So the normal will be the value that comes right out here, which is a one based value. So for example, this would be, I think one zero zero. Wow, okay, this pencil is really horrible. Um, oh my, cameras is just too small. And what we want is, what we do is we get this vector and then we mirror it. So we get this direction and mirror it. So if we want, for example, to not mirror it and just go straight forward, we can just do a plus. Wait, do we even need to make a plus? Let me think. Not really. I think we can just plug it in and then I'm going to go over what I actually did. So if we click play and now we hit uh, head to a wall. Yeah, we do it. Oh, wait, that was a bad example. But if we also come from another direction, it shoots us into the normal direction, which was a tutorial somebody, re uh, I think Spear requested that I'll do. So here you go. If we also come from this side, we go into the normal direction. And you can do quite a lot of things with this. So yeah, we have a more stable wall jump now. So what we're doing here is we get the normal. The normal is, let me, let me get my eraser to really quickly explain a few things. Okay, that didn't work. Let me just and redraw this. So the normal direction is this direction here, which goes into the normal direction of the object. Before we always went in here and just mirrored by that. So we mirrored by this and went at escape velocity, but we found a new piece of code, which we're just getting the normal. We go right straight from the wall. So it doesn't matter even if the wall is like so let's say we have a wall which is angled down. And if we click play now, it would still work. Nah. If it would be a bit lower. Oh, uh, I want a world movement. There we go. Bring all P. It would still shoot us in the same direction because what we have right now is we just multiply it and then we 
add 800 to the CSO up movement. Um, what we also could do is, give me one second. Oh, never mind, never mind, that won't work. But yeah, um, you can do a lot more if you just have the normal direction. So what you could do is we, we could completely change the escape uh, vector. We could send the player even back from where he came. But I think that's something for you, you yourself to figure out. And I hope you enjoyed this little uh, follow up on the wall jumping tutorial. Uh, I just want to explain a bit of the logic and I can read quickly also why we do this. So if we have our arrow, which is point zero in this example. We first of all get the forward vector, so where it's facing. You can get that with every uh, every actor, you can get the forward vector, so where it is looking at. And what we do is we multiply that by 200, so we have a little line going there. And then we plus that vector by this. So we have, for example, are we getting get word location and forward vector so with this we have the word location so this gives us the world location but the forward vector would be at zero one zero so what we do is we need to multiply this by this arrow here so we get our actual new location we want to line trace at so this is what we're doing here so we get the forward vector we multiply it by 200 and we add the word location and then we do our trace and yeah, this is pretty much all the logic. With this said, I hope you enjoyed this little update and if you have any more requests, let me know.